Hi everyone, I was just making a video of my JC Penny stereo. Which I just look at the model number, but I can't remember because it's on the back. It's a very big pain to flip that thing around to look at it. But unfortunately this JC Penny stereo is about had it. Cassette players work fine, radio works, but the function connect control, I've cleaned it many times, but it's still very scratchy. But for what this thing is, it has a very good sound. I'm no audiophile. I don't need high-end audio. I just want to be able to listen to my music. And this thing has been doing a pretty good job until recently. It's a very cool machine. I won't actually throw it out. Maybe I can fix it one day. But that speaker right there is going bad. It's making that on certain tones, especially when you listen to Elton John. It makes a really raspy, bad sound, like the speaker driver was going bad. Unfortunately, it's part of the board, and you have to destroy the cabinet. These are the original speakers, and they had a wall hook in the back of the part of the board so I could hang them on my wall, and I like it. There's one there, one there, and look how long that speaker wire is able to make it from there all the way down, loop the loop, to this machine. I say this was made in the late 80s. I can't find a new record of it being made by J.C. Penny. Sitting on top of my trusty 1984 Sanyo VCR, which last time I used it works great, and I'm probably jinx myself. It's really dusty, but it even has an infrared remote sensor, which will work with that new remote. But we're getting off topic. <laughs> Got your power, which I would show it to you running, but there's only one problem. You see the time. People were sleeping, and this house has some of the awful soundproofing. This is just showing the machine. I may make another video of it working, showing it working. But here's a couple of palms. Cassette decks look fine, and I always like that. Don't know who made the mechanism, but they play right on speed. Unless you play a junk tape, and I know tapes are old and they wear out. He was saying, I like collecting cassette tapes more than do records. And I, let me, if I, I just hold. Just when you find a bunch, and the always, half, most of the time, the cassettes I find are not music I like. But maybe one day I'll find a whole job lot, and so just buy one at a time. You need to find a whole box of music you like. And even with records, well, I do it. I have some records, but that's a problem. Records are too expensive. Really dusty dust cover. Need to clean that. <laughs> uh, okay. As you can see, it's actually got a full-size tone table platter. Yeah, it's all plastic, but I don't care. Belt's still good, plays right on speed. I mean, this thing, as cheap as this thing was, tone table plays dead on speed. I mean, it plays great. Cassette players play dead on speed. So don't judge a stereo by its cool, but eh, this thing does have a problem, and I don't know if it can be fixed, and... There's a reason why I can't use this record player, and I'm probably going to find another stereo, because 45 records, forget it. It's not a turntable platter thing, but I'll show you. I have the cueing lever up so we don't scuff it. As you go across, when it gets here, you see it stops, and let's say you're playing a 45, watch. Well, that ain't good. <laughs> see, over here. So it just gets that, and it just skips. So if you play 33, at the one out, it'll skip, play 45. And that's not good for the record, which costs a, a lot of money in that. I can, there was this e-clip here. I could probably fix it. But the problem is, I would not be able to get this platter off. <laughs> like, you can't grip it. See, there's no way to grip it, and it just wants to bind. I've even turned the thing upside down. I couldn't get it off. But I'm going to have to try, because this is not usable. And this cartridge ain't bad. I put one of these on a 1950s Vebcool. It sounds really good. It's not the cartridge. It's the stereo. And I mean, this thing... Those for one speakers may not be big, but you'd be amazed. This thing here has a really good sound. It's better than that Lennox Sound Boom Box I have, better than my computer speakers there, and better than that clock radio, despite the speakers being about the same size. I mean, this thing has a very good sound for what it is. Just because it's cheap, but can't play my records, which I don't have many, but when I want to play a record, I want to walk away and let the machine do its job and get to the end and do it, not skip. And it'd be nice to have an aux input so I can plug in my CD player, which I'll show. I actually have two, three of them. One of them is in the box still. It's not new in the box, but it's still got the box. 
So, this is annoying. What happens when you have fun so it's almost 100 years old? I don't mind because I didn't pay for it. In the junk drawer, we have this beauty. This is old. Now with Optimus CD player manufactured. Oops. Focus. Focus in June 1991. And I got it. I was at a at a woman's sale. Which, and the laser assembly was stuck. I greased it in order and it works perfectly. You got your volume, base, your standard transport controls, your intro, repeat, a line out. Which is kind of cool because you can plug that right into any stereo. Got your DCN and your power switch. And this one here isn't cheap like a modern day one. Focus, you stinking Samsung. See, this is metal. This is actually really metal. And you set the disc on here and that clamps it. And you got your battery compartment and holding, looking through a tablet ain't the best, but if you try to use my cell phone, you might as well forget it. So I'm sorry. Takes two AA batteries. Or you can put two nickel, me nickel metal hydride, I think they are, or nickel cadmium, I forget which one. And it can charge them. You just flip the switch. The other one is an Emerson. So you can see in the junk drawer we have, this is the one I normally use. So I had another one with sale. They don't accept electronics and they were going to throw it out and it works perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Of course, we have a few cool things in here, I'll show you. Here's all the cassettes I own. This tape plays, but when I got it off, it was guaranteed to play. It plays kind of slow, like the oil. If you must know, when tapes play slow, or dragging, whatever you call it, it's not because the tape is worn out. It's because the oil they have applied has evaporated and needs to be replenished. I don't really know how to do that, but they're working on that. And that's a chrome tape. It plays fine. I mean, the songs sound fine on this. When you get the last song, it kind of wobbly, but I tried to play it back in my GE, which is from Atlantic Sound, and even in Atlantic Sound, it always sounds wobbly. It's the tape. But we got this tape that plays perfectly fine. Last time I played it, and then this machine and that. I got this, the Top Gun Most Picture soundtrack. This is for me when Cindy Lawford. In the very beginning, it's got some dropout. It's not bad. I mean, it's a little bad, like for a few 20 seconds, but it's playable. And it plays fine. You just have to, and I can put up with it. Good old Ray Stevens, one of my favorites. This was free, by the way. The Jets. This tape here, Ale Supply. Like all the songs on, there was one bad spot on the tape. When I got it, it didn't have it, so I think a tape player of mine mangled it a little bit. I mean, it's just like, if you listen to it, and one song has, like, maybe about a full second dropout. It may just be because it's getting old, because it is from 85. But, except for that full second dropout, it plays fine. I mean, you just be listening to it, and it'll music will cut out, blah, 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 a little bad for a couple seconds, and back into it, so it's perfectly listenable. I actually got that, the only part in that plays fine. Uh, this one does too. Now that's Duran Duran, the pressure pad fell out of that. It's kind of worn. It's got some bad spots. It's been played a lot. And uh, that Duran Duran, and that Cindy Lopold, and that Beach Boys came from the same person, and they're pretty worn. There's a problem with cassette tapes. They are worn, and you don't always get ones that play, but here's the thing. I'm planning on recording to cassette tapes, because those CDRs are not all that reliable, and I'm old school. I like things on physical media, and uh, if you don't know me well, then you should see that DVD collection. <laughs> it's kind of big. Of course, oh, got some of these from my Zenith 1984 Zenith Cam Cordal, which is actually the same one as the JVC, just looks just be as of that. And I also have this audiobook I paid a dollar for, Star Trek. It's very, really, very really good. You find this, I'd listen to it. It's on cassette. Plays perfectly fine. Yeah, it's not all that old, and then audio cassette books don't get played that much. And my only 8-track. And some of these, and this was bought at Hex, which Hex was a store that was really close by, and it used to be a department store. It's gone now, and that's for the 
flea market is where I find a lot of things. And if you must know, I'm pretty cheap because essentially everything in this bedroom, I except for my lamp. Yeah, actually, except for that lamp. I the only thing I pay everything else was free. Gift. Gonna get thrown away at a rummage sale. Found at my granddad's. A gift. Given to me. A gift. Given to me with another computer. Given to me. Given to me. Oh, I did pay 99 cents for that mouse. I forgot about that. And that clock radio was free. That silly fan was free, which I need to replace because it works great on low. It's an old 1991. I like the way it looks, but when it's on medium, that thing starts shaking real bad when you get on high. I would never be able to sleep. I'm afraid of the thing crashing down, but oh. I haven't. This thing kind of fell out of the car, so I hope it's still good. It didn't crack the plastic, but this is a Panasonic TNT, which was my great grandma's. I never knew she had it. It works fine. Nothing's been done to it. It's my only 8 track player, but it's a darn cool one. And I intend to keep it. Along, this is a Panasonic AM only radio from the late 60s. Works fine. And there's a GE clock radio, which I'm just keeping there for now. I need to move it to the basement. And we got a realistic portable cassette recorder, which I'm going to sell because I have no use for it, but I fixed it. I need a belt. This works fine. Maybe someone I can find. This goes to my console TV. I tried to get it open and I kind of mangled it. But sad to say, that console TV, fortunately, isn't the best shape. This is from 89. I like these simple remotes for me. And this is what I like to call an easy remote. Look at all this. So simple. Everything you need, nothing you don't. Glad. There's some power adapters and stuff that went to the. Oh! That! I forgot I had that. That door, you know, goes with that. That's what was included with it. And there's also in here. Oh, oh yeah, that's for the Sony Watchmen. That's an official adapter. I don't need one off batteries. I actually haven't used it, but I bought a Sony Watchmen just because I thought it was cool. Even if I never use it, I do intend to use it one day. I get around to it. Here's a thick Panasonic tape deck, which needs belt, but the screws and stuff in it will like better. They just were really, really bad build quality. And here's a GE from the 80s. I have not tested it yet. I assume it works. If not, it needs belt. Underneath that is a Panasonic, which I paid 25 cents for. Of course, this is for my Nintendo 64. But enough of all that. Back to the stereo. There we go. Sorry, I'm not. Don't make videos too often, just because I forget to, and I just forget to. I have a couple of videos before this. Like I have one about my Maltronic fan. I'm sometimes stutter a little bit. I just don't know why, because I'm excited or something. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. But even that's how it is. These are just things I have. And uh, this is, uh, you can end the video now, but this is something I found new in the box. And here it is. This GE radio. I found it new in the box. Now it was opened. Works good. And I did pay a little bit more for it, but it wasn't that much. It still looks new, even though I have used it. I'm not, it's been in that box long enough. Well, that is all, folks.